<laughs> well, good morning, Open Door. Welcome to another online Sunday service. It's fantastic to have so many of you joining us and uh, lots of people coming back. Um, to join us every single week. As you can see, we're in our garden again, but it's not quite as warm, is it? We're in our winter jackets. Uh, it's a little bit nippy this morning, uh, but nevertheless, we're gonna meet together. We're gonna dig into God's word together. We're gonna enjoy some worship together. We've got some exciting things coming up. Have we? Yeah. Uh, during the service, we have got uh, an, an original song from Richard Wielden. Ooh. I know, that's exciting. And it's based on Psalm 139. You may have been with us for our Psalms group um, on Wednesday night, which is happening every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And last week we looked at Psalm 139. Barbara Steele had suggested that psalm, and so we enjoyed digging into it, didn't we? And in the week, I don't know if you knew about it or not, who knows? Richard will have to let me know. But Richard wrote a song based on Psalm 139, verse 5, and shared it, and we were able to watch it in the group. It was fantastic. This is the kind of working together that we have really enjoyed. It's been wonderful to see so many people engaging in the midweek on a Wednesday, uh, getting in touch with one another throughout the week, and a few people have got in touch with us as well. So thank you so much for being uh, committed and being dedicated and being consistent in keeping in touch with one another. I've talked for quite a while already, haven't I? A little bit later, Liz and I are gonna be sharing the word. I say Liz and I, Liz is really gonna be sharing the word and I'm just gonna be assisting her, really, because Liz has got a fantastic word on her heart which she's gonna bring to you this week and that hopefully should build onto something that I would like to bring next week. But before we do any of those things, we're gonna spend some time in worship. And in a in, in way of leading into our worship, there was a particular video, which I'm sure you may have heard of, called the UK Blessing. It's mm. been produced by Tim Hughes. He's actually been acknowledged by Boris Johnson uh, for providing this kind of blessing uh, for the nation. It's gone absolutely huge. Um, we've watched it a, quite a while back uh, and Pat also uh, sent us a link to it. So we wanted to share it with you. We wanted to encourage you to just uh, kind of take what you can from this and join in with the prayerful aspect of it as well. So without further ado, we're going to go into some worship and we're going to start off with the UK blessing.
lesson, mana rained down from heaven. This isn't second guessing, we know that we are protected. May the peace that surpasses all understanding be our message. Grace and favors in your nature, in your essence. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. May his favor be upon you and a thousand generations. And your family and your children and the children and the children. Be a party and a thousand generations And your family and your children and their children and their children May his favor be a party and a thousand generations And your family and your children and their children and their children May his presence go before
love is you Undo the veil Till all I see is you Strip everything Well, it's good, isn't it, to worship together. We might be separate geographically, but we're able to be together in spirit. It's good to worship. Over the last few weeks, we've been asking you as a church, what is it that you feel 
God is saying. We've heard a few little bits of things from uh, one or two people, but one thing in particular that I just wanted to share with you as a church, this is specific then for Open Door Church, um, has been sent through by Jean Crossley. For you, those of you that, that know, she's been joining in with the um, some of our Wednesday midweeks, uh, and she's my mum. Um, but she felt really strongly that she got a word for our church. And so I just want to share it with you. I'm just going to read it out to you. And the responsibility upon the church um, and us as leaders in the wider leadership team is to weigh the things that God would say to our church and then seek to move in obedience to those things that we feel God is saying. So I'm just going to read this out to you. So this is what Jean sent um, just earlier in the week. She says this, it seemed strange, but I could not get the message um, about the composers out of my mind last Wednesday. And in the midweek group, uh, I wasn't able to watch the introductory video to the Psalms. So instead of feeling frustrated about it, I decided to pray for Gaz and for Liz and for Open Door Church as the message went out. The first thoughts that I had were that we had to deal with preconceived ideas. There has to be a purging, a washing, a complete spring cleaning of old ideas and ways. In no way throwing out our faith in the Lord, that's our anchor. But along our path in our walk with the Lord, we may have picked up a wrong slant on certain scriptures. Believe me, I'm speaking from personal experience, as I've had to unlearn a lot of the ways I looked at things and people and God's been faithful to me and is still doing a work praise him the scripture he gave me for you open door church is Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 to 21 do not remember the former things nor consider the things of old behold I will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall you not know it I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, etc. The scripture goes on. Please read all four verses for yourselves and ask the Lord what he is saying to you personally. The last verse, 21, I believe is what the Lord would say to you as a church, open door. Part of the body of Christ. Verse 21 this people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. I know the Lord will do this and hopefully I'll be praising the Lord with you soon. Love and God bless you all, Jean. We just want to uh, say thank you, first of all, uh, to Jean for um, just walking in obedience. Um, and to listen out for, for God. And we want to lay that word before you, church, to say, here's the word of God. Please weigh it. Please pray on it. Please respond. Please um, make some kind of response to it. It's really important in these days that we don't take a holiday from listening to what God is saying. In fact, we would perhaps say it's more important, would you? Mm -hmm. Uh, that we're specifically listening out for what God is doing because there are new directions coming. We're, in some ways we're forced to do things slightly differently and wouldn't it be exceptional if we could do those directly in line with what God wants rather than just our own good ideas. So I just want to put that before you and commend it to you and ask that you pray on it. We're going to dig into God's word now and Liz is going to take the lead on this one. Um, yeah. Do you want to just tell us where this has come from? Um, yeah, I can do. It's not anything super out of the ordinary, but I think we've all been wondering during this time, um, what could God be saying to us during this time? What things could God be wanting to speak to me personally just at this time or achieve through this time? Um, and it kind of got me thinking, I'm entirely convinced it won't be a unique thing to me but it got me thinking about the different characters in the bible that were forced into a time of separation or a time of solitude and the lessons that were learned during that time so i just jotted a few down um 
and I'd just like to spend a few minutes just looking through each one of those and mm. like just digging into the lessons that each of those characters learned or a, a principle that was learned during that time. Um, so they're not in any particular order, um, they're not chronological or anything like that, but um, the people that I'm just going to quickly jump through are Esther, Noah, Joseph, Jonah, Judah, Jesus and Paul. Um, those were the ones that sprung to my mind and I'm sure there'll be more too. And feel free to comment and add your own character and what the lesson was that was from their life because that would be interesting to keep the discussion going after mm. you've watched this video. Um, so I was thinking about Esther who was thrown really into the path of the king mm. um, at a time that he was looking for a new queen after Vashti and I just found it really interesting that she was being prepared for such a very long time I can't remember now if it was six months or a year but it was a really long time of preparation before they all kind of like had a what a beauty competition really wasn't it yeah, to completely. see who would become the queen Babylon's Got Talent I believe it was called <laughs> Sorry. anyway um, but it, yeah it just reminded me of the parallel that this is our time of being prepared for a king that the things that we do now here on earth are preparatory for our eternal time with God our king our bride and it reminded me of this, or I found this scripture in 2 Corinthians 10, uh, 11, verse 2 to 3. And it talks about God's jealousy for us. And it says, For I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I, I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest somehow as a servant deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And so I kind of picked out of that that this is our time of preparation but we've got to be on guard against being drawn away from the simplicity of the message of Christ. Because mm. I think sometimes there's a core theology in the Bible and we add so many layers onto it mm. that it becomes complex sometimes but to bring the preparation back down to what is the simplicity of this gospel and of Christ. Mm. So yeah, so that was... Esther, in a nutshell, have you got anything you would add? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important when you're talking about kind of the simplicity of the gospel. Um, one of the other reasons for having a good, solid understanding of a simple gospel um, is that you you are wedded to that message. Um, I think it was Paul that said, don't let anybody change the message that was that, that I taught to you. Even if angels come and change it, you forget it because this is the this is the absolute central truth. Um, and I think the, there's a real tendency within our culture to look upon truth as relative and to look at it kind of buffet style. Oh, well, I like this bit of truth, I'll have that. Mm. Oh, I like this bit of truth, I'll have that. That doesn't quite fit within the political, you know, um, politically correct place that we're in it. So I'll, so I'll not really take that one. The Bible, I think, calls us to take um, hard and fast founda foundational, fundamental principles of the gospel mm, yeah. and hold tight to them. So I think this idea of holding fast to a to a simple gospel um, acts as a remedy against having a buffet style kind of pick and choose which bits you like from the Bible. Mm, yeah, that's good. That's good, girls. Hmm. Um, so the next one I was going to look at was Noah, um, which is quite an obvious one really. They were literally isolated from everyone forever really until they repopulated, didn't they? Wow, right. that's dark thought. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you God that that's not our situation now. Could have been worse folks. Um, yeah. But yeah. I think it always strikes me in the book of Genesis when God says that he regretted making man, mm. that man actually made God sorrowful. Mm. Like that's quite a, a challenging thought really, isn't it? Mm. That we can bring sorrow to God. Yeah. Um, and it kind of brought me to the fact that this was a time for Noah of resetting the world mm. so God had planned man and sin entered and 
like it just kind of snowballed from there really didn't it yeah. but that Noah was a righteous man and he found favour in God's eye and so he was used yeah. for that time yeah. and um, actually that's a really interesting line actually for such a time as this that was from Esther yeah. isn't it and I think in all of these things that would be my theme that would bring it back we're all here together for such a time of th as this what is God's plan for your life for such a time as this and how during this time of lockdown and segregation can you further that plan mm. um, anyway that was just a little byline there yeah absolutely um, but the heart intentions of the people around Noah's time were evil and that's why God that's what it says in the book of Genesis that the heart intention was evil and that's why it needed to be reset because there was no talking that people around and I think it reminded me of the proverb to um, Proverbs 21 I think it is where it says that God weighs the heart like he knows our motive for doing things so even though our outward appearance like we may not have evil intentions we may be trying to be a good Christian mm. but if that's our motivation for doing it we're still missing the mark yeah like we're not trying to be good Christians we're trying to honor God and live lives that are obedient to him that's right so even if you're running around like a headless chicken doing a million good things is mm. the motivation of your heart to bless God or to look good in other sight like even those things are important aren't yeah they? like we said last week didn't I do all of this in your name and didn't I cast yeah. out demons and didn't I raise the dead and God says I never knew you yeah it has to start of a place of relationship with God and then out from there doesn't that's it? that's right without love I'm nothing. Yeah. 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 Um, Any more? Keep going. Keep going, keep going. Hmm. So we're moving on to Joseph. Um, and Joseph is an interesting story because while I was reading this today, and please correct me if you've got some deeper revelation or wisdom on this, but <laughs> while I was looking this up, there's um, a line that often goes round what the enemy intended for evil, you meant it for our good. There's and a song, I've, in fact, isn't there? Yeah, and I'm not <laughs> picking apart theology, but as far as I can see, the only place that's like that in the Bible is in Genesis 50, verse 20. But it's when Joseph is addressing his brothers, and he says, But as for you, you meant it as evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is this day. And I was saying to Gaz, it's really interesting that we've took something that Joseph was saying to his brothers as something that the enemy creates. And yeah, maybe there is a possibility to that, but maybe not because Joseph had the dream first that all of his brothers would bow down to him in a position where he was superior. And that is exactly what happened. So I kind of struggle to see it as this big nasty thing happened because of the enemy but it just so happened to fulfill God's plan mm. um, but whatever way around it happened for the uh, for Joseph before he went on that journey of exile to Egypt his character was a little bit suspect wasn't it it was a bit haughty and a mm. bit teasing um, inflammatory to his brothers <laughs> about the dreams that he was being given and it kind of the word I would use for his time was it was a developing time. Like whereas Esther was a preparatory time and where Noah was a resetting time, for Joseph it was a developing time of his character where he couldn't be proud about his position in things because he started the lowest of the low and it was only through humility and God's mm. grace that he rose and then he got thrown in prison and forgotten about and then he got restored to the palace in a place of position so it was a, like that's a lot of character training right there isn't mm. it a lot of developing to the point that he could then embrace those that had betrayed him and say to them you meant it for evil but it fulfilled the plan that god had to save everybody yeah um so yeah i would say joseph was a a real developing time character wise mm. And I think during this time, there's a lot of character development going on, isn't there? There's a lot mm. of time to look inwards and 
yeah. realise reactions to things, reactions to being told you can't do this, well, I want to do that, so I'm not going to listen to that, or yeah. like, there's things that come forth when a bit of pressure is applied. Absolutely, they? yeah. God will often, I think, interrupt people's normal routines in order to kind of pull on the lead. That's what you would do with a dog, isn't it? You would just, you know, pull on its lead because you want in a change of direction. And I think that God will intervene in our routine sometimes to to nudge us towards a different direction. So if I'm getting this right, you're saying that Esther was taken out of her normal place and kind of exiled, isolated somewhere for a period of time as a preparatory yeah. Uh, for a preparing process. Noah was taken out of his place and isolated somewhere for a resetting mm. process. Joseph was taken out of the place that he was in. His routines were decimated and he was held in a place it's for... His routine, his culture and everything. Everything, his culture was gone. Yeah. And Joseph, it was for a developing yeah. process. Who's, who's next then? Okay, so next we've got Jonah. He was probably a bit of an obvious one, literally isolated in the belly of a fish. That is, that is, yeah, that's social distancing right there, isn't it? Well, quite close to the fish, though. Um, <laughs> but yeah, when I just thought about Jonah, like, literally trapped, <coughs> imprisoned in a smelly fish. Um, and people have different views on it, but because Jesus comments about Jonah's story in the Gospel, I'm yep. believing it to be an accurate historical thing. Yep. Um, and Jonah ended up in that position because he resisted the plans that God had asked him to do. Yeah. And he resisted it because he didn't think that the Ninevites were deserving of the gospel because they were Gentiles. That's right. And during that time in the belly of a fish, he was able to renegotiate his beliefs on who is worthy yeah. of this gospel. <clears throat> yeah. um, it was a time of change in perspective. Yeah. That is how I would describe Jonah's time of isolation, a time of change in perspective. Yeah. And I yeah. think this is so apparent for us. Like, yes, we're not yeah. in the belly of a fish. A lot of us are living quite comfortable lives still. Yeah. But it is a time of change in perspective, certainly. I don't believe that we'll be back to normality for quite a long time. There's going to be perspective changes on what we were doing before and what we can do in the future there's going to be perspective changes on where we were comfortable with things a certain way and now that's been taken away and how do we respond to that and does that match up with what we want to happen or how we like it to happen mm. preference changes like jonah preferred those people to not know the gospel because they weren't good enough for that absolutely <laughs> it's a real perspective change I yeah. think isolation so each of these people God's imposed on them like a, a situation and kind of held them against their will in some isolated place in order to to get something different to, to like change their circumstance that's nasty is it no it's not is the answer. I knew it was a trick question. <laughs> it's, a tri it's always a trick question. Every intervention that God makes in our lives is grace, is mercy. He intervenes because he wants us closer. Mm. Yeah. And I was thinking about like these, like specifically about Jonah. Yes, there was a tussle. Yes, there was disobedience on Jonah's part, but God raises up a storm. God kind of, God, uh, digs around with people's uh, wills on the boat and get them to chuck him off um, off the boat. Isn't there a, does somebody cast lots or is that Paul? No, that might be Paul. Casting lots is in the Proverbs, isn't it? Like, you throw the dice but it's every... Yeah. The, the point I'm getting to is this. Um, God, God intervenes in a strong way because, mm. because he's got something that he wants to accomplish. And I, the, the picture that came to my mind is something that that we do, you can do with a chicken. Bear with me, okay? You can hold a chicken and you hold it on its side and put your hand over its head. It's not cruel, it's okay. And you hold it and it will struggle and it will flap and it will kick and it will try and bite. And you hold it and you hold it and you hold it. And there's a point at which it yields and it will just stop. It'll stop fighting. 
will stop flapping, it'll stop kicking, it'll stop trying to bite, and it will yield. At that point, you can check it. You can make sure if it's got ticks. You can, uh, you can examine it. You can help it with something that it's got wrong. What I'm saying is, in the way that God intervenes with us, he will sometimes wrestle us to the floor because he's got a good purpose for us mm. and i think the point in these stories and particularly with jonah is we see that kind of human heart wrestle against god trying to get out of the situation that god's putting him in without seeing the perspective of what god wants to accomplish through it and i think that that's a really applicable uh, thought for us at the moment we could say oh why covid why covid and we're not going to go into the um the fact of whether or god's ordained it or planned it or god's allowed it okay that 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 language works for me god's allowed covid and god will have purposes kind of set up ready for your life ready for my life ready for the church life nation's life global god's got plans that he wants to accomplish and sometimes god will wrestle us to the floor in order to accomplish his his purposes and i think this is what we see in part in some of these guys um and there's this yielding that happens like jonah not so much but esther kind of gets her fear and holds it and says all right do you know what for such a time as this on i go i'll do this i'll do the thing that god's asking me um noah put up with years and years and years of mockery Is it something like 50 years he was building the ark some ridiculous amount of time and he was mocked and mocked and mocked and he put up with it because he understood that god had a purpose and i think in this time mm. that we're in that there will be things that go against the grain um that even god might be saying i want you to take this even a theology and i want you to see it my way and sometimes that will feel like a wrestle and i want to encourage you to yield mm. in that process or at least say god is this a process where you want me to yield to something what is it you want me to yield to mm. who's next on this list well, just unless you want to say we, something. No, I was just thinking about like when you were talking about wrestling, it reminded me of Abraham wrestling with, mm. um, and getting his hip socket put out of place. Yeah, sometimes forever it's changed. It's not a great thing to wrestle with God on things. It is just better to <laughs> submit and say. Like, I do wonder, yeah. like, did God protect Jonah miraculously from being scarred by the acids in the whales? Who knows? Maybe he just looked like a crazy person when he turned up. Who knows? But, yeah, it's good to know whether you should be yielding or not. Yeah. Um, right. Next, interestingly, when you were talking about... Um, you just mentioned something then and it made me think, oh, yes, that leads in nicely. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've distracted myself and I can't remember why it led in nicely. <laughs> but... Chickens. No, it wasn't yielding, about that. Wrestling, yielding. Wrestling. Purposes. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> Judah. Judah. Yeah. So there was a point in history, in about 500 BC, the girls and I have just been looking into all of this as part of our history curriculum. And do you know, it's fascinating. We're doing this curriculum, I've mentioned it a few times, but we're getting so much out of it. We're doing world history alongside biblical history in a chronological order. And we've just looked at the split of Israel into Israel and Judah. And we've recently just studied Judah being taken into captivity to Babylon and there were so many prophecies urging the people to return to God, to stop sinning, to lay down their idols or else they will be taken into captivity mm. by Babylon and literally prophecy after prophecy after prophecy came true and they still took no notice. It's stupid. And each one factually came to pass and they can even find historical articles in the secular history world that back up the biblical accounts of exactly mm. what happened it's fascinating it's almost like god gives us warning after warning after warning after warning after warning after warning after warning yes <laughs> anyway so what happened was they were in captivity for about 70 years and then a new king came in in persia called cyrus who said they could go back to judah and they went back to judah but during that 70 years, some other people had moved in, probably the Samaritans, and Cyrus sent them back and said they could rebuild the temple, even gave them provisions for rebuilding the temple, 
And during that time of being in captivity, the people's heart changed and they were ready to submit to God. They were ready to hear God. Again, that thing of not submitting before, having to go through a struggle and then coming back, like best just to be on God's original plan. Yeah. And for that one, what I felt God was saying was it was a time of God getting their attention back, mm. like getting their focus back on him, like where they'd been ignorant to the warnings, to the men of God giving the words. They'd not listened or paid attention. And when they came back, they did. They rebuilt the temple under Zerubbabel. Um, <coughs> but, and it was this that reminded me of something that Gaz had just said, there were people around trying to distract them and mock them and so they stopped for 14 hmm. years oh wow they'd laid the foundations they'd had a massive party about it the people that had been in judah before exile cried because it wasn't as like grand as the temple that solomon had built but then they stopped for 14 years because the people that had moved in during that time were against them and didn't want them to do it wow. to the point that god had to send more prophets to say come on and that's where haggai comes in haggai come oh, on, on. Um, and he <laughs> basically was sent to say you've got distracted you're looking at your panelled houses and you've left my temple in ruins and god wanted to be back his presence back in the temple there yeah. with them so he sent a few prophets around that time um, but haggai was one of them and it, yeah, like for open door, that's quite a relevant word, but that's kind of some of the historical background yeah. to that. But yeah. they'd come back, they'd started doing a good thing, and then got easily discouraged yeah. and quit. Can and I we did talk oh. about this once at open door? Yeah, I remember I think we doing did. like some discouraged, yeah. distressed. Um, but yeah, I think one thing that really flips into my mind about that is like when we are coming back together or even during this time, don't get discouraged or distracted mm. from digging in. Yep. Yep, it's not a holiday. It's not a holiday. It's not a holiday. Yeah. This is interesting because you can often read the Old Testament like God is saying to them, I want a temple. Make me a temple. Build me another temple. Make it amazing. I want a temple. Do you know the reason God wants a temple? He wanted to dwell with his people. Mm. It's about relationship. It's about closeness. It's about connection and intimacy. This is why the big deal about the temple. This is why the big deal about the Ark of the Covenant. God wants to be with his kids. The big deal about us being obedient and keeping sin separate from us. Constant repentance. Yeah. Constantly offering forgiveness to people. Constantly receiving forgiveness from God to keep that relationship yeah. with his presence. God wants to mitigate separation all mm. of the time. Have we got more people? This is great. A real plan, whistle isn't it? stop now. We're, we're, we're rounding up. We're rounding up. Okay. But I couldn't talk about times of isolation without talking about Jesus when he was in the desert for okay. that 40 days yeah. because I know certainly for me during some of this time I felt real desert like and really like some of my theology like I was sharing last week how I was reading that book by Colin Urquhart and it was really resetting some things for me and it's kind of I'm sure Jesus did not need resetting on stuff but he was reaffirming the truth against a manipulated version brought by the enemy. Absolutely. And I think during this time, for me, I feel like there's been part of that, like a reaffirming of what is the actual truth, the simplicity of Christ against a slightly manipulated jumping through hoops version that we sometimes get yeah. dragged into. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like that's one of the absolute spearhead things that God wants to do in this season for every individual and corporately within open door that we that we almost get offsted in about about the things that we believe what is it that we believe why is it we believe that where is it in here have you got your score open mm. but more than that like it reminded me like we've got um peace lilies in our house and over autumn time and winter you can get a bit discouraged thinking like they're just green leaves do you think a flower will ever come back hmm. and then my friend told me that she'd looked into it i've not so i can't verify the accuracy of it but she was saying that how it flowers in the spring and summer is reliant upon how well it's cared for during <gasps> the autumn and the winter and i thought Whoa. that's interesting isn't <laughs> it because that's cool it's a bit like us if during these dry times we just switch off and yeah. dull ourselves down 
and become less sensitive mm -hmm. to God because we don't feel he's there so what's the point that's going to have an impact in the times when we feel like he's we have to keep digging in we have to keep caring and tending that relationship even though it's not flowering at that moment absolutely in time. absolutely yeah. and this speaks as well into that kind of intimacy this kind of personal relationship versus public relationship what was that quote that you said that you're you're um your public oh your public spiritual walk will never outshine your private personal yeah absolutely you're never going to be as deep out there as you are in the in the secret yeah. place yeah? yeah so last but not least we are on to paul, paul who spent much of his time in prisons and house arrest yeah and for me it was interesting that it wasn't a time of preparation or resetting or developing or perspective changing for Paul, it was time of fruit. Some of his best and most fruitful work was done whilst under house arrest, yep. encouraging the um, churches around the area with letters, like yep. commending people to others and encouraging yep. disciples of the faith to yep. keep going. Like Those were real fruitful times for Paul. And yet we may say, that's it, I'm under house arrest, what could I possibly do now? <laughs> that's right. It must have been a huge frustration to the Roman authorities that when Paul was under house arrest, the gospel battered forward just as yeah. fast as it had done, and maybe even faster. Maybe it was um, the, the fact that he was under house arrest were, was su gave such impetus to his, to his letters. Mm. The context of where things come from is really important, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So there you go, a little whistle stop tour through my thoughts of people that were forced into a isolation and their response to it and the things that were able to be done during it fantastic that was amazing wasn't it that we saw esther let's just run through and, and re review we've seen esther in a time of preparation yeah we've seen noah in a time of resetting we've seen joseph in a time of developing we've seen joseph at uh, jonah in a time of perspective change we've seen judah in a time of being taken into captivity have god getting their attention back and we've seen jesus in the desert at a time of truth setting reaffirming no this is truth this is truth and paul a real fruitful time whilst in house arrest that's fantastic there you go. that's fantastic we spoke i mean we've spoken about this through the week haven't we a little bit and we spoke about perspective do you want to just give a little taster on where perspective comes into this because we spoke about um kind of isolation versus what's going to happen afterwards and how that might follow on towards um, earth versus heaven. Yeah, so one thing I was chatting about with a friend on the phone actually was um, that like this time now, like we're all looking forward to going back to normal, to being able to go back out and mm. resume what we consider a normal life. Um, but actually the bigger picture of that is this entire lifespan on earth is temporary much like this time of lockdown is temporary and we look forward to what happens after it mm. this time on earth is really temporary and it's that time of preparation of developing of truth setting that prepares us for what happens after it and that's mm. a real key for me um something that really resonated with my friend as well absolutely and just like those peace lilies that the the this this preparation time this time when not a lot is happening where it feels a little bit different it affects the fruit we're going to look next week i think at how our time on this temporal planet affects hugely um, our eternal existence uh, so that's what we're going to have a look at next week just thinking about these guys then this is a brilliant overview and a brilliant um a brilliant message and i'd like it to be a springboard and people really to interact and say this character in the bible they did this and this was what they learned absolutely and, uh, and of personal testimonies of what you feel god's spoken to you during this time because yeah. your personal testimony could really encourage somebody else that's yeah. looking at the comments and I, and I wanted to just really lay it on the line to say do you know what you, you all have got access to this video go back to the one that sticks in your mind okay Liz has given seven people there I don't know. 
Uh, One, Esther, two, three, no four, one. Five, six, seven, yeah. Yeah, Liz has given seven people there. Sometimes, you know, in a message, so one one thing will just will just resonate. Will just kind of cling on to you. Um, find that person, read up their story, have a think about what it is that God might be saying to you through this message. Is God wanting to develop you? Is He wanting to prepare you? Is He wanting to um, change your perspective? Is He wanting you to 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 fight for truth harder? Is He wanting for you to be fruitful? And I want you to ask those questions of your soul okay this week dig in really dig in if you sit down at any point in the week and think hmm what shall i read read some of this okay and ask those questions and then let's be honest and let's be open and let's feed back to one another you can do that by ringing somebody up you can do that by ringing us please ring us um, <laughs> it'd be really nice to um have some guys uh, feedback to liz about this word but let's make this applicable not just something that tickles our ears the bible talks about that doesn't it that was fabulous. Um, do you want to just pray mm. this uh, scripture and this message out there? Yeah, yeah God, we just want to thank you for this time of looking at your word again. God, I thank you that um, you just bring these things to us. Um, Lord, it's not clever thoughts of our own. And um, God, I just pray that the things that resonate with each person, Lord, that there would be fruit from that seed. God, I pray that none of us would come out of lockdown the same way we went in, in terms of our spiritual position with you. God, we can't gain more favour with you. We can't earn anything. But God, we want to be developing more and more to be like Christ and more and more to be making sure our feet are on the path that you've got for us each and every day. And so, God, I just pray that you would speak to your body about the things you would want us to learn during this time. God, that you would inspire us about when we're able to come back together, inspire us about how to reach out with the simple gospel of Christ. God, we don't just want to waste away this time on earth. It's such a tiny amount of time and we want to be productive with it. So God, just fill us with your Holy Spirit and speak to each one of us. We ask and pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for spending this time with us. Um, yeah, it's been good. It's been really good. We want to invite you on Wednesday to join us for Psalms, uh, a roadmap to knowing God. And we're going to be looking at Psalm 30, suggested by Christine Gent. So join with us. If you've not already applied to become a member of the group, do that. It's super, super easy. Um, we will meet online at We'll meet online at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. And until then, keep in touch with people and uh, dig into some of those things that we've heard about today. We'll see you on Wednesday mm. and then next Sunday.